let's maybe talk first about what it means to participate in the sacrament with the Nia Single to God's Glory, and then we can kind of um, explore our application beyond the sacrament. Yeah. When we partake of the sacrament, we're renewing our gospel covenants, but we are also communing with God. Uh, Elder Oaks mentioned that angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost. So the promise in the sacramental prayer that the Spirit will be with us is also a promise that we'll have communion and communication from angels and from uh, heavenly beings who will help us in our daily life. So I love the idea of, of thinking that angels are communicating with us during the sacrament. I haven't ever thought of that before. Um, something we like to do during the sacrament is I'll take my journal and I'll just write things I'm going to do better this week or one thing I'm going to do better. And so I'll write, usually the thought comes to me, smile more or give more hugs. And so that's for me, I can focus on one thing. I can do that and think about it. But I think that really helps us to have an eye single to what can I do better yeah. to help build the kingdom. That's beautiful. I think it's significant that we remember the sacrament is the purpose of the sacrament meeting. If we rush it or if we're distracted by other things, uh, that we're kind of missing the most important reason we're going to church in the first place. So how can we participate in the sacrament with an eye single to God's glory? What does that mean? And then we can talk about afterwards, how do we cultivate uh, a singled eye as it were? Yes, please. One way we can take part in it is instead of thinking about the bread that we're eating and the water that we're drinking, we can think about why we're eating it. Like, why are we eating the bread and why we're drinking the water for his sacrifices? Excellent yeah, that symbolism of, of Christ's body and Christ's blood, when we really are thinking about that. Just to build off what Goldie was saying, so this phrase, I single to the glory of God, this isn't the only place that it appears. So in Matthew 6, 22, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Then Luke. The light of the body is the eye. When thine eye is single, the whole body is also full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body is also full of darkness. The New Testament was written in Greek. And if you were to look up this word single in Greek, there are multiple ways to translate it. Okay, it comes from the Greek word hoplus, uh, which can mean whole, healthy, properly functioning, or clear. So this idea that if we're performing the things with an unoccluded eye, with an unoccluded perspective, when we're seeing clearly, that's what God wants us to do, essentially. So I think to, to participate in the sacrament with an eye single to God's glory perhaps implies a kind of attentiveness to God's glory or the symbols behind the actual things that we're doing. So for example, baptism, rather than thinking about the water and immersion, we're thinking about rebirth and resurrection and, and cleanliness. And the sacrament, rather than thinking about the bread and water, we're thinking about uh, the sacrifice that Christ did for us, how we're cleansed through renewing our covenant. So this idea of seeing beyond the symbols uh, maybe is, is perhaps part of it, or looking yeah. forward to something, perhaps. You know, I think there's also something to be said about the word glory in this phrase. Uh, Joseph receives this revelation, section 27, in the late summer of 1830. And during the summer, he'd also begun the translation, the inspired revision of the Bible. And so in June, he had received the, the revelation, uh, the inspiration uh, that we now record in Moses chapter 1 that talks about God's glory being the immortality and eternal life. And so that's another way to think about when we're taking the sacrament, that's what our eye is on. How are we moving toward the, that reunion with God? Speaking of that reunion, thank you for bringing that up. I love in verse 6, where actually it starts in verse 5, but he's talking about this future sacrament meeting. And so these people are hearing about this future sacrament meeting that Christ is actually going to be at. I'm starting in verse 5, we see this. It says, Behold, this is wisdom in me, wherefore marvel not, for the hour cometh that I will drink of the fruit of the vine with you on the earth. So he says, With Moroni, whom I have sent unto you to reveal the Book of Mormon, with Elias in verse 6, and he explains why they're there. Verse 7, and also John, the son of Zacharias. And then in verse 9, and also Elijah, to whom I have committed the keys of the power of turning the hearts of the fathers to the children. And also with, in verse 10, Joseph and Jacob and Isaac and Abraham. And then verse 11, and Michael or Adam, verse 12, Peter, James, and John. You just look at this whole thing. And then I love verse 14 as well. And also with all those whom my father hath given me out of the world. And I really want to meet these incredible people who have given everything to the Lord. And they will be there at the sacrament meeting with Jesus Christ who literally gave his life for us. I mean, this is beautiful. Elder Bruce R. McConkie has a great quote on this actual occasion of the sacrament with Christ. Before the Lord Jesus descends openly and publicly in the clouds of glory, attended by all the hosts of heaven, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord sends terror and destruction from one end of the earth to the other, before he stands on Mount Zion or sets his feet on Olivet, 
or utters his voice from an American Zion or a Jewish Jerusalem, before all flesh see him together, before any of his appearances, which taken together compromise the second coming of the Son of God, before all these, there is to be a secret appearance to selected members of his church. And is referring specifically to this time, this appearance of Jesus Christ with the sacrament. So what do you think about this, this future experience? I would like to be invited. Isn't that what we're all working towards? I don't know what it's going to take, but in one form or another, the, the Lord is promising that we're, we're going to be there. Yeah. And, th and then, of course, that's the introduction to, so therefore, lift up your hearts and rejoice and gird up your loins, because if you want to be there, it's going to be a battle. Mm -hmm. And we, as members of the church, have to be prepared. So I was thinking that keeping our eyes single to the glory of God will help us to just, like, put away all the distractions, and then we'll look forward more to the time of when Christ comes again and can administer the sacrament. And so when we don't focus on distractions during the sacrament meeting, we can think more about that time and be more prepared for it. Thank you, such a great comment. And I just think, and this is typical of, I think, us as members, we want to be there, as Leah said, but we want everybody to be there. We want this to be the most beautiful, sacred moment where we are all literally with Christ as He is. I'm having this sacred and exciting time with all of us.